Reading a book has been how humans have expanded their knowledge and world for ages. However, some books are so dangerous that the readers must be careful with them. We present 15 of the most dangerous books you probably don't want to read. Number 1. The Necronomicon Most books don't even get to the extent of the Necronomicon before they are branded dangerous and banned. The Necronomicon, a book bound in human flesh and inked in blood, a book filled with spells to raise the dead and summon ancient creatures, causes insanity and even death in its readers. According to legend, the mad Arab, Abdul al-Hazrad, wrote the Necronomicon, which is over a thousand pages long and originally titled Kitab al-Azif. Over the years, thanks to its cult following, the infamous Necronomicon has appeared in countless books, virtual games, and classic horror films, including one of the most well-known horror films of all time, The Evil Dead. Abdul al-Zarhad sought hidden knowledge of the occult arts in the ruins of the Babylonian tunnels, also known as Memphis's subterranean secrets, where he praised and worshipped the demonic entities yogg Sahoth and Cthulhu. He spent his final years in Damascus, writing the few final pages of the Necronomicon. As witnesses claimed, the poet was seized by an evil entity who ripped him apart in broad daylight shortly after finishing the book. There was no trace of the original testament of the Necronomicon after his death. A rare copy fell into the hands of Theodorus Philetus, a fictional scholar from Constantinople, in 1950 AD. Philetus later renamed the book the Necronomicon, or Book of the Laws of Dead, after translating it into Greek. Many people experimented with the Necronomicon's lethal magic before it was suppressed and burned in 1050 by the historical figure Patriarch Michael, who died in 1059. Olaus Wormius, a professor from Copenhagen, later discovered and translated the book into Latin around 1228 AD. Pope Gregory IX prohibited the use of both Latin and Greek texts. During the Salem Witch Trials in 1692, a secret copy of the last Greek version was kept in Salem, Massachusetts, at a private library before it was set fire to, according to Lovecraft. According to the work History of the Necronomicon, the original copies were kept in a few select libraries, including the British Museum in London, the Widener Library of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, the Buenos Aires University, and another location that is allegedly made up. Number 2. The Discovery of Witchcraft The Discovery of Witchcraft was penned by Reginald Scott. First published in 1584, it was the first treatise on witchcraft written by an English author. Scott was born in 1538 into a prominent Kent family and the executions of several witches in nearby St. Osseth in 1582 inspired the Member of Parliament to pen his infamous treatise. Scott's discovery was written in response to the bloody witchcraft trials that afflicted Scotland and England during the early modern period, following the 1542 Witchcraft Act, which regulated the penalties for witchcraft. The Great Scottish Witch Hunt of 1661 to 1662 culminated in a series of trials and burnings that spread from London all the way to Rosthay on the island of Bute. Scott believed that the pursuit of burning witches were unjust and unjustified, and his discovery was published in London as an expose on witchcraft by Henry Denham for William Braun. Scott describes a variety of conjuring tricks in sufficient detail to have been used by aspiring magicians as a grimoire, a book of spells. Scott's work was the first book in English to explain how conjuring tricks worked, whether on purpose or not, and he helped popularize magic for the early modern masses. Early modern playwrights such as Thomas Middleton and Ben Jonson were inspired by Scott's discovery, and it is said that Scott's work inspired the witches in Shakespeare's Macbeth. Despite the fact that Scott's work was well received when it was first published, the discovery was condemned by a number of influential figures, including none other than King James VI of Scotland. According to legend, upon his ascension to the throne as King James I of England in 1603, James ordered that all copies of Scott's work be burned and destroyed. Number 3. The Orphan Story That Could Not Be Published For Hundreds Of Years Because The Publishers Kept Dying A lost and cursed Golden Age novel chronicling the splendor, adventure, and violence of Spain's imperial zenith was recently published for the first time 400 years after it was written. The Orphan Story follows the journey of a 14-year-old Spaniard who leaves Granada to seek his fortune in the Americas. Its hero travels throughout the Spanish Empire, from the high society fiestas of Lima to the mephitic mines of Poros, and witnesses Sir Francis Drake's attack on Puerto Rico 
and the sacking of Cadiz. After romantic adventures, a shipwreck, and a run-in with pirates, the soldier cum missionary finally manages to embrace the serenity of monostatic life in Peru's viceregal capital. Martin de Leon y Canides, a Spanish Augustinian friar born in Malaga in 1584 and who, like his eponymous hero, had traveled to Lima, wrote the story between 1608 and 1615. It was scheduled to be published in 1621 under the pen name Andreas de Leon, but it never saw the light of day, as people who wanted to publish it kept dying. Some died from accidents and illnesses, while other deaths were not explainable. This convinced people that there was something evil lurking within the pages, and the book was cursed. Number 4. The Picatrix, or Gayat al Hikam. The Picatrix is a 10th or 11th century Arabian book of astrology and occult magic that has gained notoriety for the obscene nature of its magical recipes. The Picatrix, with its cryptic astrological descriptions and spells covering almost every conceivable wish or desire, has been translated and used by many cultures over the centuries and it continues to fascinate occultists worldwide. The Picatrix was first published in Arabic under the title Gat al Akim, which translates to the aim of the sage or the goal of the wise. Most scholars believe it began in the 11th century, but there are well-supported arguments that it began in the 10th. The Arabic writings were eventually translated into Spanish and then into Latin in 1256 for Castilian King Alfonso the Wise. It was given the Latin name Picatrix at this time. It incorporates both magic and astrology. One influential interpretation calls it a handbook of talismanic magic. According to researcher David Pingree, the Picatrix is Arabic text on Hermeticism, Sabanianism, Ismailism, astrology, alchemy, and magic produced in the New East in the 9th and 10th centuries AD. The obscene nature of Picatrix magical recipes is one factor that has contributed to its notoriety. The heinous concoctions are meant to alter one's state of consciousness and may result in out-of-body experiences or even death. Blood, bodily excretions, and brain matter are mixed with copious amounts of hashish, opium, and psychoactive plants. Number 5. The Book of the Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage The sacred magic of Abramelin the Mage was translated into English from a French document in 1897 by occultist S. L. McGregor Mathers. The text has been traced back to the 15th century. The text tells the story of Abraham of Worms, who met an Egyptian mage named Abramelin and learned the secrets of a powerful Kabbalistic magical system from him. We learn about this system and its secrets as Abraham passes on his knowledge to his son Lamech. The system revealed in the text is made up of lengthy and elaborate rites and preparatory practices in order to gain the knowledge and conversation of one's guardian angel, through whom magical secrets will be revealed to the practitioner. The practitioner will obtain a number of familiar spirits of aid to the operative magic encountered within the third book of this text, via evocations of the twelve kings and dukes of hell. As the head of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn at the time, Mathers' The Book of the Sacred Magic of Admiralin, the Mage, became a very important and influential to the Order's practices, through which it was to have a profound influence on Alistair Crowley's practices. The book's operative magic is centered on 242 magic word square talismans, which, like the operative content of the other popular grimoires, became incorporated into folk magic practices. The use of these squares allows the practitioner to gain a variety of powers, many of which are sought after in folk magic and cunning arts, such as knowing the past and future, conjuring various spirits and visions, weather magic, gaining treasures and wealth, curing various maladies, inciting love or hatred, discovering thefts, and opening locks. The squares may grant more dramatic powers, such as the ability to fly or walk beneath the water, to resurrect dead bodies, to transform men into beasts, and beasts into men, to become invisible, and to raise magical armies. Number 6. The Untitled Spellbook That You Are Expressly Forbidden To Read these manuscripts were thought to have been written in the early 1900s, as their first appearance in a library was in the 1920s. It is in the form of two handwritten spiral-bound books that resemble the ones we have today. They are worn and have a few tears and rips to some pages, but they have remained in good condition to this day. The books began when Persephone addressed Irene, a Wiccan high priestess, recorded her family's spiritual history as an American witch of Swedish and English ancestry. These manuscripts contain Persephone's witchy history, which she reworked throughout her adult life, including her mother's grimoire, 
The first book is approximately 250 pages long and contains spells, incantations, curses, and enchantments, as well as information on gems, planets, rites, potions, and even exorcisms. The second book is approximately 150 to 200 pages long and contains alchemy and chemistry recipes, cures, perfume and balms, nerve tonics, and even hairspray recipes. Because Persephone's spells are believed in Wiccan culture to contain more power than most other records due to their embodiment within them, the first book is thought to carry the curse heavier than its counterpart. Before opening the first few pages of this book, you may want to digest the warning attached. To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further, or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution. And you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. Number 7 the Voynich Manuscript. There is one book in Yale University's Beneke Rare Book and Manuscript Library that no one has ever been able to read. That may sound strange as books are meant to be read. However, the 15th century Voynich Manuscript, only slightly larger than a paperback book, is a linguistic enigma, an incipherable code with a murky history. Some have attempted to decipher the message contained within the elaborately illustrated tome, but even the best scholars, codebreakers, and scientists have failed. Wilfred Voynich, a Polish antiquarian bookseller, purchased an unusual illustrated codex or manuscript in book form in 1912. Voynich would publish this codex, which would eventually bear his name. It would also go down in history as one of the world's most enduring mysteries. The Voynich manuscript, which measures 22 and a half centimeters by 16 centimeters, contains approximately 200 pages of handwritten imagery and text. Its vellum folios feature naked bathing women, astrological diagrams, and exotic plants. And all of this is surrounded by writing in a perplexing language. The cryptic text contained within the Voynich manuscript is by far its most remarkable feature. While it contains the occasional Latin character, the vast majority of it was written in a language that was unknown at the time. Furthermore, it has long perplexed eminent scholars, scientists, and codebreakers. There's no single explanation for the Voynich manuscript's purpose or why it was written in a secret language. The illustrations are almost as perplexing as the Voynich code. These colorful images can be found throughout the pages and appear to imply that it was pharmacopoeia or some kind of medical guide. Number 8. The Lesser Key of Solomon The Lesser Key of Solomon, also known as the Clavicula Salmonis, is an anonymous 17th century grimoire and one of the most popular books of demonology. It was also long known as the Limageton. That name is now considered incorrect due to faulty Latin. It was published in the 17th century, but it was heavily influenced by text from the 16th century, like Johann Weyer's Pseudomonarchia Daemon and late medieval grimoires. Books by Jewish Kabbalists and Muslim mystics are also likely sources of inspiration. Some of the first section's materials concerning the summoning of demons dates back to the 14th century or earlier, the book claims to have been written by King Solomon, which is undoubtedly false. The titles of nobility assigned to the demons, as well as the prayers to Jesus and the Christian Trinity included in the text, were unknown in his time. The Lesser Key of Solomon contains detailed descriptions of spirits and the conjurations required to summon and compel them to do the conjurer's will. It describes the proactive signs and rituals to be performed, the actions required to prevent spirits from gaining control, the preparations prior to the invocations, and instructions on how to make the necessary instruments for the ritual's execution. The original copies differ significantly in detail and spelling of the spirits' names. Print and online editions of contemporary works are widely available. It contains descriptions of the 72 demons that King Solomon is said to have summoned and imprisoned in a bronze vessel, sealed with magical symbols and that he forced to work for him. Number 9. The Codex Gigas This book is so dangerous that it's referred to as the Devil's Bible. However, it is fascinating enough that it was once considered one of the wonders of the world. Experts say Podles Monastery was the first known owner of the Codex Gigas, thanks to the note on the first page. The manuscript, however, is unlikely to have been created there because the monastery was far too small and impoverished to take on such an endeavor. According to the note, the monks of Podles, pledged the Codex Gigas to the monastery in Sedlec Czechia in 1295. The manuscript was also repurchased in the same year from the Benedictine Order of Benvo Monastery, according to the note. Over time, the manuscript became a sought-after collector's item. Emperor Rudolf II borrowed the Codex Gigas and took it to his castle in 1594. He presumably had no plans to return it. Rudolf II amassed a vast collection of everything from living and dead animals to paintings, sculptures, and oddities. 
his interest in occultism was piqued by the devil's portrait. The manuscript remained in Prague until it was taken as war booty in the Swedish army during the Thirty Years' War. It was then transported to Stockholm along with many other valuable items. The Codex Gigas was eventually acquired by Queen Christina and housed in the library at Stockholm Palace. According to legend, the Codex Gigas was written entirely by a single scribe in a single night. When the scribe realized the task was beyond his abilities, he turned to the devil for assistance. Number 10. The Munich Manual of Demonic Magic The name alone is enough to scare away lots of people. This grimoire, also known as the Necromancer's Manual, was created in a 15th century German magician who wanted to create a source book for summoning demonic spirits. The manual contains three types of grimoire magic, illusionist, psychological, and divinatory. Illusionist spells are designed to deceive people into believing they are seeing castles or armies. Psychological spells are intended to wield emotional or political power over others. Divinatory actions are used to garner information from the future or the past. The Munich Manual contains passages about sacrificing mythological creatures, but the most disturbing aspect of this book is that it completely disregards the angel folklore and focuses solely on black magic and descriptions of classical exorcisms. The original is written entirely in Latin and is housed in the Bavarian State Library in Munich, though there are a few translations out there causing havoc in their own right. The book is a veritable feast of information on black magic and necromancy. When casting from the Munich Manual, any practitioner of black magic gains a plus one effective level. They also have access to all the campaign's black magic spells. Furthermore, non-practitioners may gather useful information of various abominations and beasts, except angels, encountered in their travels. With the exception of angels, access to the Munich Manual grants the player a plus four to effective academia, occult roles for learning about any abomination or supernatural beast. Number 11. The Book of Soiga the Book of Soiga is fascinating for many reasons. The history of this manuscript is intriguing not only because of the contents of the book, nor because of its supposed disappearance, but because of the eccentricity of its most famous owner and his impressive and rather dubious methods of determining what secrets lay within the Book of Soiga's pages. The majority of the Book of Soiga's approximately 200 pages are all written in Latin, and detail instructions for magical rituals and incantations, as well as instructions and guides for astrology and demonology. The Book of Soiga was a fairly typical book of magic beliefs and studies of the time, with its listed conjunctions, when two or more planets line up exactly, lunar mansions, and positions of the moon, and angel names and genealogies. While no one knows who wrote it, we do know that one edition came into the possession of John Dee in the late 16th century, which marks the beginning of its known history. John Dee was an astronomer, astrologer, alchemist, and occultist, as well as a mathematician and teacher. Dee's life work straddled the line between scientific and magical, a distinction that would have gone unnoticed during the age of Renaissance magic, which saw a rise in interest in various forms of ceremonial magic and the belief that magic could explain what science had yet to explain. Dee's efforts and investigations frequently crossed lines into alchemy, divination, and hermetic philosophy, earning him a lifetime of attacks and slander. In the end, Dee never uncovered the secrets of the 36 tables within the Book of Soiga, in fact, he misplaced the book for over 12 years, from 1583 to 1595. After Dee's death in 1608, perhaps due to the ransacking of his library, the Book of Soiga was lost. Number 12. A Poem That You Must Not Read Aloud There is joy in reading quietly to yourself. However, when you read the poem Tomino's Hell, you read it without a sound to avoid dying. Tomino's Hell, or Tomino no Jigoku, was published in 1919 poetry collection Saken by poet Saju Yaso. On the surface, the poem is about Tomino and his journey through hell. It is said that if you read the poem aloud, you will either die or suffer a great disaster. Terayama Suji, a director, made a film based on the poem in 1983 and later died, which is how the poem's curse first became known. But why has the poem been cursed? What exactly is Tomino? And why is he or she in hell? Even for native Japanese speakers, the true meaning of Tomino's hell can be difficult to grasp. There are numerous blog posts and forum posts where readers ask others what the poem means and if any of them have read it aloud. There are numerous interpretations, and it's up to the reader to determine what the poem means to them. Number 13. The Grand Grimoire, aka The Gospel of Satan The Grand Grimoire, also known as the Red Dragon or The Gospel of Satan, is a medieval grimoire thought to have enormous powers. Legend has it that it was written by an apocryphal figure named Honorus of Thebes, who is said to have been possessed by Satan himself. 
The Grand Grimoire is said to have been one of the most powerful occult books ever in existence, and it contains demon summoning instructions. This grimoire is said to have been written in the 16th century, during the cheap grimoire boom of the 18th century in France. A version of the Grand Grimoire was created and published the following century. The original Grand Grimoire is kept at the Vatican's secret archives and is not currently accessible to the public. The Grand Grimoire is widely regarded as one of the most powerful grimoires ever created. According to the many sources, this grimoire was written in 1520 and was later discovered in the certain Tomb of Solomon in 1750. Number 14. The Oralinda Book The Oralinda Book, also known as the Uralinda Chronicle, is a highly controversial book from Holland that is occasionally mentioned in books and articles about Atlantis. It's said to be one of the oldest books ever found. While a Dutch translation was published in 1871, the first English translation was not published until 1876. The Orlinda book, which purports to be an episodic chronicle of Frisian wars and migrations, describes events that occurred very precisely between 2194 BCE and 803 CE. The reference date is the submergence of Atland, a lost land in the North Sea which occurred in 2193 BCE, according to the book. The book is peppered with descriptions of catastrophic earth changes like volcanic eruptions, unusual weather, and rapid sea level changes. This is intriguing because even if it is a forgery, the Orner Linda book predates the modern Atlantis craze, which began in 1882 with Ignatius Donnelly's Atlantis, the antediluvian world. The Orner Linda book also claims that for the most of its history, Europe was ruled by a mostly peaceful, just matriarchy, and that the Frisians invented writing. On the dark side, parts of the Orner Linda book contain bigotry and intolerance that will irritate most modern readers. Regardless of its authenticity, the combination of the themes had led to a confusing fascination with this text. Number 15. The Roanc Codex Many scholars have studied the text known as the Roanc Codex to try and to decipher its meaning and figure out who wrote it and when it was written. However, these efforts have been in vain thus far, as the text's meaning and origin remain a mystery. In the 1800s, the Ronic Codex was discovered in Hungary. It is thought to have been part of Count Gustav Spathiani's personal library before he donated his entire personal library to the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. When the Codex first appeared, it appeared to be from the Middle Ages. Many people were perplexed by this mysterious text, wondering what it meant, who wrote it, and what purpose it served. Many of these questions remained unanswered because the author has yet to be identified and the text has not been translated. The Ronit Codex contains 448 pages of indecipherable text, which is similar to the old Hungarian script in that it was written right to left and has similar combinations of straight and rounded characters. Scholars claim that the writing could be anything from Hindi to Old Hungarian, despite the fact that it lacks features from each of those written languages. The Codex contains more than just written text. It also includes 87 illustrations depicting military battles, landscapes, and religious icons that are said to allude to various religions such as Christianity, Hinduism, and Islam. Some have interpreted this to mean that whichever culture created the text was the one in which the three religions coexisted. Let's hear which of these books fascinates you the most in the comments section below.